flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm starting the process of hardening off a lot of my ranunculus and my anemones. Now these are several weeks old now. You never know in my area, we could have a really early spring or we could still have snow on the ground. Right now we do still have snow on the ground. So I'm not ready to get them in the ground just yet, but I do have some options here where I will put some of them in the ground, including the small eight by 10, or I think it's a seven by 10 or eight by 10, little greenhouse where the ground in there is ready for planting. I will be doing that. We have a couple of really cold nights coming up, so I'm gonna wait for those to pass. And then after these get hardened off, I'm gonna be putting some into that soil in the greenhouse. And then I'm gonna be building some low tunnels. I have most of the supplies. I've gotta to go to my father's, he's an electrician. He's got a lot of extra conduit, so I'm gonna go over there and get some pieces to use to make my low tunnels. I already have the hoop bender, I already have the plastic, I already have the Agrabon, which is a frost cloth that protects plants from some frost. So anyway, I thought I'd show you, this is kind of where I, uh, hang, they hang out here and in the morning they'll get some dappled sunlight. It's 45 degrees here today. It was maybe 50 by the time uh, the warmest part of the day today. So they'll be out here. They're used to the 65 degree temperature of my basement. So this is their first kind of experiment here with 45 degrees and they did have a couple of hours of dappled sunlight. The sun comes through a little dappled here because of my porch railings. So anyway, so I'll put these out here uh, for a few more hours and then I'll bring them back down in the basement. I do have a couple on the back deck that have been hardening off for several days now. In fact, I've left them overnight the past two nights and they didn't seem to have a problem. So they're gonna be the ones that are going into the hoop house, ready to go in the ground. <laughs> we really only have a few inches of snow left on the ground, except those banks. It's where Brad would like plow up the snow because we, ha we wanted to have a big area for parking and stuff like that. So he would plow up big banks to clear it out. It's kind of, I mean, you can see behind me. We'll do a 360, ready? There's the house, the driveway, snowmobiles. So we have a lot of grass exposed and then uh, I'll just stay right here. And then we have the huge banks because he does plow a huge area. But where the actual snow is on the ground, we only have maybe six inches because we live on a hill and it's very windy so the snow just goes quickly. Plus, we're full sun all the time right now before the maples get their leaves. So the snow just melts really fast. We've had a couple of 50 degree days. Today is about 50 degrees. so. I'm very happy at how fast the snow is going. So super excited about that. I'm also excited because we have a winner. Ding, 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 ding. So the other day I posted a video where I was going to be giving away a copy of Aaron's new book, Aaron from Florette, Discovering Dahlias, or Dahlias if you will. And we had over 1,300 entries into this giveaway and I'm so excited to announce the winner is Kelly Blackwell. Uh, we've reached out to you. You just get a hold of us, and I will, when I say us, it's me. Get a hold of me, <laughs> and uh, I will get that copy in the mail to you. So, congratulations, and thank you guys so much for entering that giveaway. I had a lot of fun with it, and if you guys have not checked out the book, check it out. I believe Erin has more copies on her website that are signed, and there's also some on Amazon. That link is in the description below. My chickens are being loud again today. Hello! Oh! Hello! <laughs> I wanted to show you the difference between the like labelle ranunculus and the butterfly ranunculus. Look at the size of the leaves. They're just so much bigger. This is the first time that I'm growing a butterfly ranunculus, so I can't wait to see what the difference is when it comes to the flower itself. I do have some anemones that have a little bit of a of a yellowing. I'm not really concerned about that. I think they're just getting too big, ready to get into the ground. These are the ranunculus that I just started uh, about four weeks ago. So these are the younger ones. And these ones look great and ready to go too. A little bit more about hardening off seedlings. It's super important because you're taking the seedlings from an environment that's controlled. There's a set temperature, like my basement, it's 65 degrees. They're getting 16 hours of light every day. And you're taking them from that environment and you're throwing them out to the wolves. But you need to do that slowly because they need to acclimate to their new conditions. So you can't just take 
a plant from 65 degrees and put it out to 40 degrees and think that it's going to be okay, it probably will suffer uh, at least a little bit of shock and maybe stunt the growth of that plant. So it's important to harden off plants and that's pretty simple. It's recommended that you do this over the course of about seven days. I usually do it a little faster than that, but that's because I'm very much like Aaron where I am impatient, <laughs> like the impatient gardener. But so I definitely uh, try to, um, I don't know, break the garden rules, if you will, and uh, do it a little bit faster. It is hot in here, guys. It's hot in here. I'm in my little greenhouse. Woof. It is warming up in here quick with the sunshine and it's only 50 degrees today. So anyway, I'm excited to get into this soil. It's gonna happen. It probably could happen today. Other important part of hardening off is not putting the plant, ooh, the sun just disappeared. There's, there's a tiny cloud. Another important part of, of hardening your seedlings off is not to place them in direct sunlight right away. So you don't wanna do that because your plants can get sunburn literally they can burn up in the sun and you can tell that they're getting a sunburn because the edges of the leaves will turn like a white almost like a beige color and they'll start to crinkle up and literally be burned so not a good idea so you slowly expose them to the sun you know the first time you do it just do like an hour or two outside and in some dappled light or in the shade just make sure you do some research on hardening off and and make sure your plants have a nice happy transition from inside to their new home I just can't wait to dig. I can't wait. Who else? Who's with me? Just standing in the sun and feeling the warmth. It's awesome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is one of my well summer hens. She's not nice. She's kind of like a queen of the flock. She jumps on the rest of them and pecks their head. My poor bearded silkies are not bearded anymore because she pulls all their hair out. But she did start laying again this week. So she's kind of just like the ruler of the roost. She even would attack the roosters when I had roosters. I don't have roosters anymore. But yeah, you're not a nice lady. But well, summer hens lay a dark egg. Don't you give me attitude like you're a rooster. By popular demand, here's Frizzle Frazzle. <laughs> Hi, Frizzle Frazzle. What are you doing? You look so good today, Frizz. Frizzle Frazzle. Okay, so what? What else? Oh, so I'm gonna be starting some sweet peas. I already have a lot of sweet peas started, but I'm gonna do my final succession of sweet peas. So I already started Old Times and Midnight, and today I'm gonna be starting Elegance Mix. Elegance Mix is a beautiful mix of several different colors. I've had the peas soaking in water for a little bit. Not everyone uses that method. I've always just used that method and I usually get germination in two to three days. So I'm not gonna be doing like an instructional video on how to grow sweet peas, but I am gonna show you my process of pinching them today. I did have the camera running the other day as I was pinching a tray of sweet peas, so I'll show you a little bit of that footage, but then I'm gonna do another tray here with you today. And guys, if you want to know more about the whole sweet pea process, Erin, the Impatient Gardener, just posted a great video. I'll link that up above. She goes through all the details of planting sweet peas. So I was gonna do this inside, but it's just too nice out, so I decided to move all of my stuff to the porch. Let's get this locked and loaded here. Okay, so I have the tray that desperately needs to be pinched. This is a sweet pea jungle. And I believe I told you guys, yep, this is the old times one. So the ones I pinched before were uh, midnight. And then this is an empty 72 plug tray that I have filled with pretty moist and dirt. And I have my elegance mix sweet peas. So I'm just gonna put two in each hole, two to three in each hole, and then they're done. I know a lot of people will use things like root trainers or other things to put their sweet pea plants in. I always have put them in either 72 plug trays or two inch soil blocks. And I just um, haven't found them to, everyone says that they don't like their roots disturbed. This is how I planted a bunch of them last year. They all grow together. I don't even know if I can grab their roots. Like they all grow together like that. And then I separated them and put them in the ground and they didn't have a problem. So uh, maybe some are finickier than others, but 
Um, these are some old times, some extra seeds. Like I run out of room on the plug tray, I'm just like, all right, mushroom. This is a package of sliced mushrooms. So I put these in here. I mean, if I wanted to, I could pot these up, um, which I, I might do, I don't know yet. I have a lot of other things on the agenda for today. So there's uh, really, I don't know, I just would tear it apart and put it in the ground and they grew and my sweet peas grew really well last year. Yeah, you kind of just like take it out. <laughs> it's cute. Look how cute it is. I think plants are a lot more resilient than we give them credit for. So I will continue to plant my extras in mushroom pots. And uh, I mean, if I don't plant them, I'll have none. So at least if I try, then I might have some. So we'll see. That's just my attitude about it. It's just the way I think. So class, who can tell me why we pinch sweet peas? Go ahead. Ooh, ooh, does it make more flowers? Correct! So, we would just do that because it will create a bushier plant and some say even uh, longer stems, some say shorter stems if you pinch them. But anyway, it's gonna give me an extra couple of weeks here in the 72 plug tray if I pinch them because they're way too tall for this. A lot of the experts say to pinch it above a full set of leaves. There is differing opinion whether that should be the first set of leaves or the second set of leaves. I really don't think it matters as long as it's above a set of leaves. Let me zoom in on close on this baby. So this pea plant right here has that set of leaves right here and then a second and then a third and then a fourth and it's developing its fifth on the top. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it above the first set of leaves because I think I can do that. And then right here where I took that off, two new branches will form. Sometimes it will do this regardless of whether you pinch it or not. You'll see there are new stems forming down here. So all I'm gonna do is keep going around the tray and pinching above the first set of leaves. You could also do the second set, totally up to you. You're supposed to do it when the plants are about six inches tall. And I would say that they're like eight to 12 inches tall right now. And uh, you should be doing them a little bit sooner, I think. They're kind of a big tangly mess right now. So what are you guys growing for sweet peas? Tell me in the comments what you guys are looking forward to in your sweet pea patch. And you guys, sweet peas have the most amazing smell it's just something like I was harvesting sunflowers if you're not familiar with my property my sweet peas were grown inside the fenced in area last year and my sunflowers were grown halfway down the hill I would be harvesting sunflowers and I would be like what's that smell what is that and it would be the breeze carrying the scent of the sweet peas all the way down probably 200 feet and it would hit me in the face it's the best I loved it and when they first started to bloom they didn't have a strong smell they didn't the first time i put one in my nose i was like i'm disappointed but as the buds continued to come and as the flowers were blooming it really started to have this wonderful aroma and i'm so excited i can't wait to smell it again do you see this look on my face like i can't stop smiling i feel like do you ever watch like giada making her italian mixes and how weird it is because she's like smiling the whole time that's so natural, like I can't stop it. I can't. But you know, when you're doing something that you have a passion for and that you love, you just get that way. I'm literally grinning ear to ear as I'm playing with the plants that are gonna be beautiful blooms this summer. like a foot tall right there this side of the tray and this side of the tray this is now a manageable size that can go back down in my basement for another couple of weeks until we have temperatures that the sweet peas can sustain now some people say that they can handle um a hard frost but not a freeze um, I had them outside with uh, 20 degrees last year and they were fine it is a beautiful tray of pinched sweet peas and now where the leaves are new branches will emerge. It's amazing. Okay, so these are going back downstairs. I'm gonna finish planting this tray. Probably should pinch these too, but I'll wait. They're still babies. I probably should. I just should just do it, because otherwise they'll get too tall. 
Because these are kind of like the right size that you should be pinting, pinching them at. Pinting? Pinting? Who's pinting? I forgot the big one. I forgot this one right here. <laughs> it was dangling over the edge. So silly. I saw a bluebird today. It's a pretty big deal. I'm an avid bird watcher and I was on the phone with Sunflower Steve in the sunroom and I was, we were just chatting and he's talking and I was like, Steve, wait. He's like, what? To? A bluebird. <laughs> and I, we watched it. I, we, I watched it. He was listening to me describe what was happening. I was like, it's on my crab apple tree. It's on the, it's diving, it's diving. It dove down and it got something to eat. Anyway, I grabbed my camera. Yeah, this camera right here, and I didn't have a long lens on, so I'm trying to take a picture of it up in one of the maple trees right here, and I just didn't get a good picture of it. I needed a different lens to get closer in, but that's exciting because I love bluebirds. I love all birds, and uh, we have, I think we have six birdhouses here that we use every year, and we always have two or three families. One ends up, usually a sparrow will take it over, and then we'll have like a wren in one of the houses, but usually we do have a few bird, bluebird families that we love to watch. I'm gonna get going. I have thousands of seeds to start this weekend. I've got so many things going on. I'm starting my vegetables. I'm starting a whole bunch of stuff. So hopefully I'll make another video about that. Ooh, the wind's picking up. <sighs> Spring's coming. Ooh, got a cold chill on that one. <laughs> um, we only have a few more inches of snow covering the tulips, so I can't wait to see if anything is poking up there. I can't wait to show you guys. Remember when I planted them? <laughs> It was so much work and all of that work, it's gonna be worth it. So anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> Shave and a haircut, two bits. Squishy, 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 squishy. Anyway, who's coming with me? You. <laughs>